well, 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 well. Fuck you, man. You don't know DJ Mark Lee. You better preach. You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. You can't run in backs. It ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with, with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say win. Wins when wins, congregation say amen. Trades, debates, wins, losses, the latest news, bro. Prophet Kev speak, he got him saying hallelujah. All right, welcome to Preach Care. Preach with Rashad, another episode, another sermon. Country Wild Card Sports and Wild Card TV. Rashad, <clears throat> another year, man. We made it to the last division talk. We still had the playoff to get to, but... What's going on, man? Yeah, man, we've been knocking them out, man. It's uh, what preseason is done. Roster cuts be in soon, so this is the last one, man. Last but not least, I'm about to say that, and I think we say, I think we say probably the most competitive, or and and or hardest division to predict, the AFC North. Um, this division, man, great coaching. Um, I think for the most part. You have two of the best quarterbacks out here, outside of Mahomes, of course. You got legendary coaches in Tomlin and Harbaugh. You got the coach of the year, what, two of the last four years in Stefanski. So, and then you got you got the the Bengals, who's just been really a, a very consistent uh, franchise for all the money that they spend. So let's get into the AFC North, man. We're gonna start off with the Baltimore Ravens, Vegas line ten and a half wins. This is, a, this is a division that plays the uh, NFC East off the last episode we talked about. They also play, is that the AFC West? So they, they get Pat Mahomes and uh, the division we already talked about with, you know, Sean Payton and all the guys over there. So so we will get to see the Harbaugh's match up again. You know what I mean? First year back. So um, the Ravens, man, two-time MVP, Lamar Jackson, he's back. Um, this, I mean, this team really, I mean, adding Derrick Henry is, a, you know, we don't know if that's, if this is the Derrick Henry that we know is the beast, beast, beast Derrick Henry, or this is a step back Derrick Henry. I don't know. But I think when you say Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson in the backfield, that scares the shit out of me. This is going to be a very compelling team. A lot of storylines surrounding them. Lamar two MVPs, can he ascend to playoff success? Derrick Henry comes over. Is he the missing piece that can take away some of the running from Lamar, give them a more balanced attack? Then you got the Zay Flowers. Will he emerge into a, a prominent receiver? Mark Andrews coming off injury. And then you go on the – still got a solid steal O-line. Then you look at the defensive side. They've – They've lost some guys, but they've always been a, a stout defense. So you got to trust that they're going to still be be solid. You lost your defensive coordinator, so the Ravens have a multitude of storylines. They're going to be one of the more intriguing teams of the year, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, and and uh, losing the defensive coordinator now you got Zach Orr, who's been on the staff already, so kind of a promotion within. Um, Ty Mocking, who when he came over last year, you know, the the everybody was excited because, oh, the Ravens are going to pass the ball. And I don't know what it was, man. I don't know if, if Lamar shrinking in these moments. And I think that's what we come to find out, right? Like, are, are we if, if he don't if he don't get it done this year, or is in the fashion that like losing the Chiefs is not is not a problem. It's not a problem. It's the fashion, right? Like you're not being yourself. If you don't be yourself again, what do you what do you, what do you think is the repercussions from this? Because, I mean, at, at some point things have to change, right? I mean, you lost you lost some uh, offensive linemen previous seasons. You just lost uh, who's a linebacker that went to Pittsburgh? Um, who I'm thinking about? Uh, Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen had to go. He was a, he was a fir- uh, what first round or second round draft pick a couple years ago. You already lost him. It's time for guys to get paid. You know, what I'm saying like you, you know you got to pay Kyle Hamilton. His contract ain't been paid yet, so. You know, at some point, we all know these windows do close. We know Lamar Jackson keep you afloat for as long as he can. But uh, yeah, I love the Derrick Henry addition. It's, it just it just makes you scary. I, I wonder if Tom Mocking and this team on the offense side of the ball gets back right because they were they was bottom bottom in the league 
in passing yards. I mean, when you when you if I if I t- if I showed you where they were passing the ball, just passing, because that's what that's what at the end of the day that's what quarterbacks do. They were they was twenty one ranked in the league. Twenty two was Desmond Ritter and Tyler Heineke. Twenty three was who was that? Uh, Jimmy G and and uh, what's it O'Connell? So there's two yeah, guys. First off, <laughs> Devontae Adams off receiver <laughs> wanted to. He said he about to lose his life at the QB position, and they only had. Ten years less than the Baltimore Ravens last year, right? So when you when you think like that, you know Arizona without Kyler Murray, uh, no no Kayla Williams, Chicago right behind them, Denver Broncos right behind them. It, it, it's not pretty, right? Obviously, we know the rush game is is where they 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 dominate, right? They were number one in the league last year. Now you got Derrick Henry, so you should you should at minimum be top three, right? Just off that alone. But at some at some at some point, you have to you have to pass the ball. But they also same point, be yourself because they won themselves against the Chiefs. They they didn't run the ball. They didn't even try to, and at least Lamar didn't try to. So it's kind of like, I think a balanced approach is the best way to success. And I don't and I don't know if it gets it done, but this team this I, I mean I, I just don't know like how long can we keep redoing this and assuming that they're going to be a playoff success. Like I don't know how many years we'll keep trying to defend them. You know. And, I mean, I think that's the key thing. We have to just accept them for what they are. Lamar is never going to be just Mahomes or Rodgers or Marino or Brady. He's not going to be those guys throwing the ball. Like he's going to always be a, a hodgepodge of let's run it sometimes, let's throw it sometimes. It's just a matter of when they get in the playoffs, does it not look so bad? Because when, they, when they're in the playoffs, the losses always look bad. When they lost to Tennessee and – some other teams they've lost to, it always looks bad. It's like, dang, Lamar is not the same guy we saw win the MVP or make these great plays in the regular season. In this playoff game, he's not showing to be that guy. So I think that's what it will really boil down to. They have the pieces to put together another over under ten and a half. They have the horses to put together another 10-plus win season. Uh, I doubt he'll be in the MVP conversation again because he don't have the storyline for it. But they should definitely be in contention to win ten games. I mean, division is loaded, but they should. With one of the best coaches in the league, one of the best rosters in the league, they should be able to win ten plus games. Yeah, and, and you rap about Lamar Jackson, like you know, he don't have he don't have to be uh, Pat Mahomes or Joe Burrow to be successful. Um, do you think this is a team that's, you know, when we're recording this podcast, teams will be making their cuts and anything can happen at any given moment when you hear this pod. Do you think this should be a team that's in the receiver market? Not saying IU because that's a bad that that comes with it. But do you, guys, you know, rumors like Tim Patrick from the Broncos or I think Terrence Marshall axed out from Carolina. Like, do you think this is a team that needs a wide receiver? Or do you think or do you think they just need to go out there and just get go with the horses they got and that's be good enough with Aguilar or Bateman and Zay Flowers? Yeah, they got to stay with what they have. There's no point of trading for a receiver when your offense isn't built around it. It's built around Lamar being a dual threat. They ran the ball well with, with Gus and other guys. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, they ran the ball well with those guys. Now you have Gary Henry, who's been outside of McCaffrey, the top of the food chain at RB. So they're never going to be like this strong passing team. They're going to always be bottom 20. Um, you got Zay Flowers, you got Mark Andrews, you got uh, likely the other big tight end. You got some weapons, but they're never going to be this dynamic passing team. I mean, we always talk about um, some other guys. Like, we and we will talk about this guy uh, in our fourth segment, like Justin Fields. Lamar, he's not going to be a crazy 3,500, 4,000-yard passer. That's just not who he is, so – um, trading for a receiver, I don't think that really solves uh, solves anything for them because that's just not what their offense is built around. Yeah. All right. So, and then la- last question, I'm, I'm gonna get to you. Do you think they have to pass the ball to win? In the playoffs, you do because you can't yeah. just pummel everybody running the ball. Like it, they've already, they are built for the regular season. What Lamar does in the regular season is dynamic. It's a week to week basis. But when it's a one and done situation like the playoffs you have to be able to throw the ball because if, if you get caught flat the first two quarters and now you're down 17-3, you 
you gotta throw it to come back. I mean, they already they are gonna have a good defense. It's just a matter of when you get in the playoffs, can you if you get down or not even let's say not even you down, you just need a a drive to get in field goal position to break a tie. Like you have to be able to advance the ball swiftly. Look at the Chiefs versus the Bills <laughs> in that game. Mahomes and Eleanor advancing the ball rapidly to exchange touchdowns and field goals. So that's where the Ravens always fall short. You gotta be able to put together some game winning drives. And to do that, you have to be able to throw the ball. Yeah, and I think that's some, those are important questions to ask, uh, just because at some point you're gonna you're gonna have to do it. And, and you see the physical coordinators come out and say Lamar doesn't succeed because he he can't pass when he has to, right? Um and, and that and that's you know, and I'm not trying to pick on the Ravens, but you know, I mean, we 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 both have them with winner records. Like we like we're we're both smashing the over in terms of our records. And but but you got to ask these questions though because they are they are a great regular season football team, a team that I think what the last every playoff Lamar Jackson has, every loss he has, they their worst game offensively was in the playoffs, like scoring like scoring wise, like if they score twenty one as the lowest in the season, they'll have fourteen in the playoffs and they lose. So like that's that that can't happen when you, when when again you're not yourself. Like if you average twenty eight points a game and you only score fourteen in the playoff loss, you're not yourself. You know? I mean they they've only scored they've been in the playoffs six they played six playoff games and with Lamar and their highest output was twenty. They lost the first playoff game was to the Chargers. They lost twenty three to seventeen. Lamar completed forty percent of his passes. Didn't even have two hundred passing yards. They lost twenty eight to twelve to the Titans the the next year. He was thirty one out of fifty nine, so it's fifty two percent. A lot of those throws were because they were just behind, so he was just, you know, just tossing it. Um, and then uh, they did get revenge the next year. They won twenty to thirteen. That's the only game they scored twenty points. You lost the next round to Buffalo seventeen and three, fifty eight percent passing. Uh, you they lost to Cincinnati the year after that, but Lamar didn't play that game. Then this past year, they did beat Houston. No, that was 20, 2023 season, so 2024 uh, playoff game. They beat Houston 34-10, solid game, 16 for 22, 152 yards, two touchdowns, no INTs. And then Kansas City got you 20 to 37. But the score was 17 to 10, but his passing was 20 out of 37 for 54 percent. You're not gonna win games with 54, 58, 48, 52 percent passing. You're not gonna. It's not gonna get it done. No, it's not good. Enough. And that, that's why I said, like, taking a you know, take a low flyer on, like, a Tim Patrick, 6'4 receiver who can go make a play down the field if you need to. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I said that. But, yeah, I, I had the Ravens still 13-4. and four. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's more nitpicking because I think the Ravens' question marks are in the playoffs. There's nothing to worry about them in the season. They're going to, they're going to win games, right? It's how many and what position they put themselves in. To be a home game, or whatever. you you have the conference championship in your house. What what are you what are you supposed to do? You're the one seat in your house. Got to buy. You won a game, and now you're one step away from the Super Bowl, and you and you didn't get it done. So I, you know, and, and, and it's, again, you're losing to Pat Mahomes. Right? And when you look at the history, reflects itself. You lost to the great. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I can't get mad at it. But, but yeah, so that, that's all my questions. I got them thirteen and four. I, I think they, even though they have a tough schedule, I still think they'll come out on top. I think uh, in the in the season they can catch people off slipping because not a lot of teams can stop the run, um, especially with Lamar and Derrick Henry coming at you. So um, thirteen and four for me, I still think it'd be a great season, a great season for them. Um, yeah, thirteen and four. Yeah, twelve and five for me. Tough and stretch. You're starting off in your first five games. You're gonna go to the Chiefs. You're gonna play two division champions, Cowboys and Bills, and then you're gonna get your division rival. The Bengals. That's four of your first five. You definitely beat the Raiders. So um, four of your first five are tough games, and uh, you know they've always had solid starts in September. So let's let's see how they how they fare in, in that first four out of five. But they for sure get one. <laughs> they for sure get one. All right, let's move on to the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. This team is also at Vegas line of ten and a half wins. Um, after coming off of injury plague season from Burrow, um, I think they just say that he struggled with like gripping the football at first or, you know, being able to throw the ball, all the stuff with his injured hand. He'll be back 
Jamar Chase, your boy, is, is begging for, for some money, holding out. I think he did return to practice this past week. Um, so I think he hold out enough, I guess, to make his point or whatever. We know T. Higgins is back on a uh, uh, a franchise tag, and we know and we know guys like Trey Henderson already asked out on a trade. He got one year, I think, remaining as well. So he wants a new deal. It's I'd be like, man, where, where's all this money? Where's where's the money? Because they're not paying a lot of guys. But Cincinnati, you know, that's not a really a a, a multi billion. It's not the Cowboys, not the Giants, not a big market. So, I, I guess from the Bengals' perspective, bro, um, I just I just want to know is that window going to close because they couldn't pay Jesse Bates. He's gone. Trey Henderson is one. He has he already asking out. You know, T Higgins. This is his last year. Chase won the bag. I'm just trying to figure out like is that mixing is gone? Is this enough distractions to to alter like to stop them from from going somewhere? Because when Joe Burrow's healthy, they win games, and he can put himself right next to Pat Mahomes, saying that I'm one of the best quarterback. I am the best quarterback. At least he has the skill set, but he hasn't. He's been he's been hurt. He beat Pat Mahomes in the playoffs, unlike Lamar Jackson, unlike Josh Allen. So. um I guess my only question is, uh, is 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 this is this distractions for the Bengals? Everybody want to get paid, and we haven't won anything. This is kind of similar to who the 49ers, right? This is the 49ers of the of the AFC. Like we haven't won anything, but everybody want to get paid, and we ain't we we not San Francisco <laughs> as far as uh, market. So guys, let's be realistic here. So that's my that's my big question mark. The Bengals, you, you look at where they've been the last what, three to five years, they are the ultimate window is now John Cena, your time is now team. They made the Super Bowl, and shout out Drake, nothing been the same since. Because <laughs> Burrow, you, you got close, but now Burrow getting hurt. You know, you got to, when you have your window, man, you got to capitalize. So, like, now they back in prove it mode. So, I think they could be a contender. If Burrow, I always say, if Burrow is standing up, it's a 10-win team. As long as he's standing up, I don't care who he's throwing the ball to. I don't care if it's Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Jermaine Burton, uh, I think, what, they tight in Gasicki. I don't care who he's throwing the ball to. If Joe Burrow is standing up, I know they lost Joe Mixon, uh, Hopefully Chase Brown get those get those snaps by our fantasy team. But <laughs> as long as Joe Burrow is standing up, I think they're a ten win team. Uh, but he's had a, a rough go. I mean, we know what he did in college with LSU. He had two elite years in the pros, but to me, they're back in prove it mode. The fact that they even had the season they had last year without him shows you the team is talented. But when it comes time to Burrow's health, pay everybody. And all that kind of stuff did not the most glamorous market, not even the most glamorous franchise. Like they just started really upgrading their facilities the last few years with Burrow. So uh, I'm optimistic, man. Uh, like I said, I think if Burrow standing up, you win 10. I gave him 11 because over on it's 10 and a half. I'm being overly optimistic, I think, but they do have a couple of gimmies. Uh, week nine, Raiders, gimme. Uh, Giants, Panthers, uh, they got a couple New of gimmies. We won. Yeah, Patriots. You got a couple of gimmies, and if you just kind of split some of the other ones, man, you should be fine. Hey, the 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 greatness of your schedule when you play another division that third they third place team sorry as hell, and you third you know what I'm saying like you good so, um, yeah, yeah. Since that, I mean that they 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 addressing the need for protecting Joe Burrow first round draft pick. Mims, I think from Baylor, I believe. I'm not mistaken, maybe about that. But um, yeah, they, they did draft the receiver. That's the T Higgins replacement. We all know that. Um, yeah, I think I think losing base is a is a is a is a big thing that nobody's talking about. Um, he's one of the best players on the Falcons. We talk about why Falcons have a, a chance to to go to the playoffs. This could be a reason why they have a chance not to make the playoffs is losing a guy like that, right? I think they have a good front four. Uh, and I think they're solid in the back end, but when you lose one of the best guys in the league, it's kind of hard to replace that. Uh, I have eight. I'm eight and nine. I think I think they are again one of those 500 teams um, that can be from seven to ten wins. Um, and yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I do agree with you about the Joe Burrow standing up thing. 
I think Joe Burrow, if healthy, if you say he's going to be healthy in the next 10 years, and so is Lamar and so is Josh Allen, I probably would take Joe Burrow in that scenario. Um, but because that's, you can't do that, uh, that that's what dings him a little bit, right? Um, so, yeah, I got 8-9 wins. 8-9, eight, eight, I do think, according to my schedule, I had them collapsing at the end of the season where – they are what eight and eight and six, looking good in the playoff race. Lose to Cleveland, lose to Denver, lose to Pittsburgh to lose the season out. Is that realistic? I don't know, but I think that's that's what how that's my storyline for the Bengals. And then I was like, oh, Jace got to get paid. Higgins gone. Now you like you like you said, <laughs> nothing was the same. And then the views. Shout out to Drake. They're not gonna be. Are they gonna be in this spot again next year? I don't know. Like they they got to pay everybody now. Next year, and then if they don't make the playoffs this year, it looks way worse. Giving everybody raises, and we not even in the playoffs. Yeah, the only thing I like about their schedule before we transition, they have gaps between all their tough games. You get New England, then Kansas City. You get Carolina, then Baltimore. You get the Giants, then you're gonna play Cleveland and Philly back to back. You get the Raiders, then you play Baltimore. You know, so you got some some. Uh, Kind of some lesser, less. It's the NFL. Every game gonna be somewhat tough. Yeah. But you have a quote unquote easier opponent before you go play a tough opposition. Yeah. Or devil's advocate, you got a lot of trap games in there. That don't, too. Hey, don't lose, don't lose to Tennessee on the road when you got Dallas and Cleveland on the on the outside. You know. So yeah, that's that's devil's advocate though. Um. Yeah. So you got eleven and six. I'm eight nine on the Bengals. Let's go to the Cleveland Browns. Um. Okay, I might and I might be a little too bullish on this. I go ahead and reveal. How much time do we have? Because we're gonna have to spend on time on these two teams right here. Oh, we good. We good. We good right now. We're gonna differ a lot on these two teams right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the Browns. I think this is one of the best rosters constructed. When you when we talk about head coach and QB, so we remove that. This team here, Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, and Elijah Moore. That's a good trio. We talked about the Eagles trio last episode, but. This is a good one as well. You got one of the best old lines in Coughlin, Taylor Wyatt, uh, Batonio, J.J. Willis. This is elite. And on top of that, they got Njoku with Jerome Ford and Nick Chubb on the way back. You have – I'm sorry, Rashad. I, I hate I hate to be the guy to tell everybody. This is the best official player in football now that Aaron Donald's retired. Miles Garrett. And I, 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 I love T.J. Watt. I don't think he's better than, uh, than Miles Garrett. And then the, the, the fact that they have – Denzel Ward, uh, they got one. They just got the whole Greg Newsom. He gonna get paid soon. You got the D line. This team is elite, and I may be, I may be very, very bullish. I could be very, very wrong. Everything outside the quarterback, Rashad, I am in love with, and I say that because I am scared as hell of the quarterback position. <laughs> I am scared, very scared. I love Stefanski. I think he's one of the best coaches in the league. They also cheating. We get Mike Vrabel as a consultant on this team. This is a very, very well coached team, very talented team, and it all can crumble at the QB position. The number is six. Not a shout out great this time, but we do we do rock with the six God. <laughs> the number is six. That's the number of games that Sean Watson has played. The last two years, he played six in 2022 and six last year. The numbers are not impressive. I mean, everything you said about the roster, uh, I'm on board with you. Miles Gary, next to Aaron Donald, is the preeminent defensive player in the league. He's the game work guy. I, I like Bosa. I like TJ Watt. I like Fred Warner. I like Sauce Gardner. Miles Garrett is the record of the NFL. He he is that dude. But um with a quarterback league, man, I don't Stefanski's elite. We ranked him high in our coaching, man, but something something happened in them masseuse parlors. And the boy ain't the same. They took they took his power away. <laughs> I don't know if they took his power away or he gave it away when he got caught in all this stuff and all the mm. media, but Something happened in the massage parlors, and the boy has not. I don't want to call Deshaun Watson the boy because I don't want that with Drake. But <laughs> Deshaun, Watson, Deshaun Watson, this man has not been the same. Three and three was that record when he started. Ninety nine for one seventy, fifth day percent completion, eleven hundred yards, seven TDs, five INTs, 
this past year. They did win five of the games he started. But if you go back and look at some of those games, they were relatively some close and very unique situations. But uh, he was still basically replicating his same stat line in, in the six starts, 105 for 171. 61% completion, another 1,100 yards, seven touchdowns, five INTs. You were averaging one touchdown pass per game in a Stefanski-led offense. You're going to have Cooper on one side, Judy on one side, and Joe Cool right here with you. I know Chuck coming off the ACL, but he already back squad 1,100,000 oh, pounds. Again. Crazy. So, <laughs> need Chuck on the way back. <laughs> but, man, I can't trust the Sean Watson. So, whoever the backup QB is, I forgot who it is. I'm drawing a blank. Jabu. Oh, yeah, it is James. Y'all forgot James. So, <laughs> so, in in a, in a Stefanski led offense, I would trust Jabu. I would, I would trust James because there is no way Deshaun Watson finishing the season. I don't, I don't see it, man. But nonetheless, I still gave the Browns 10 wins because we saw what Stefanski can do. Man. The man. <laughs> Hey, the man QB proof. Hey, he he did it in Minnesota. He did it here. He did it, DTR out here running around. Don't do he don't do, he not doing nothing, and they still win games. Um, Tyler, they brought Tyler Huntley over from Ravens. Hey man, they don't they don't need Deshaun Watson, man. Hey, hey, it's and we we already had this discussion a long time. Of every and all the time we do, I think we both want. I think everybody in the league in the world understands you probably had to move on for Baker Mayfield. I think that was a. I think at even though hindsight twenty twenty Baker's back to being a baller, I think he had to get humbled, right? I think that 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 had to happen, right? But I the the, the decision to put all of this money into Sean Watson, yes, Jam Jam James Winston <laughs> might win a damn Super Bowl because Deshaun Watson get hurt, and that might be a blessing to the Browns. Like if Deshaun Watson go down or Deshaun, I, I, and I'm not wishing for injury at all, but Deshaun Watson, uh, do you think he can get bitch? Do you think he can get? Do you think he can get bitch for James Winston? Because James Winston is a leader of men, bro. Like no matter where he go, everybody love him. I gotta see the contract. I know everything guaranteed. So benching him, cutting him, it don't really matter. It's a sunk cost. You got. It. But I don't think you can just outright bench him if it's like. Two or three years left on that thing. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I. I. I th- all right. So I, my my record thirteen and four, and I may be bullish, but this is one of my best records. I don't. I don't put out this season. So I'm very very high on the Cleveland Browns. And man, when I talk about receiver, as a, as an A grade offensive line, A grade, you have the best player in football on the defense side of the ball with Dalvin Thomas, D- uh, Thompson, Thomason, Zadarius Smith. Shelby Harris, that's a good D line. You got good linebackers. You brought Devin Bush over. You brought uh um Jordan Hick from Minnesota, who had a great season last year. And you got an elite trio of corners with solid se- second secondary back there. Oh, safeties. Like it's just a, uh, it's who the kicker? Dustin Hopkins. That's a good kicker too. This is this team it got no weakness except for one position. Elite coaching, Stefanski, elite GM and I think it's I think it's Barry. An elite consultant in Mike Vrabel. The only thing that I guess not elite, LeBron James ain't there no more. But that's the only thing wrong with Cleveland right now. And Deshaun Watson, like, bro, I, he's gonna be the reason why they don't win. Like, this is a this is a we won despite of uh type of team, right? And is that good enough to win your Super Bowl? I don't know. We talk about Lamar Jackson, you have to pass the ball to win. I don't know the Sean Watson that guy, but hopefully Chubb come back. The defense be elite, and you just need subpar offense to get it done. Yeah, I mean Stefanski, eleven to five, eight and nine, seven and ten, eleven and six. No matter who he's had to work with, he's putting up wins. So yeah. you know, I, I don't know, man. To me, Watson is what's going to either elevate or hold his team back. I'm leaning more towards hold the team back because until I see him finish the season and get back to the player that he was in Houston when they were making those playoff runs, uh, I'm, I'm highly doubtful. But even, even throughout all that, because the team is so talented in every other area, I still gave him 10 wins. Yeah, yeah. And I got 13, so 
the over under is only eight and a half. <laughs> I'm locking. I'm, I I know I should lock it in. I should make it a lot. But Lord have mercy. I I gotta. I I had to. I had to. This this gotta be one of my locks for shot. I just don't see how Vegas has. If if they had Bengals at ten and a half, I don't understand how the coach, the two time coach of the year, the last four years with bad QB play, is supposed to be nine wins. I I don't know. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I I do think this is a double digit win team, no matter what. Um, all right, we got plenty of time, plenty of time for this last team, and I wanna I wanna surf it. I wanna uh, do a disclaimer, get my Joe Budden on. This may it may come off as hate, but I also think it come off as true for shot. So let's get to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I think two things can be true. I think you can upgrade your quarterback position and still not have an answer at quarterback. I think both things can be true. In this, situa- in this situation is the Pittsburgh Steelers where Kyle Pickett, Kenny Pickett, ooh, see, I don't know his name. That's how bad he was. Kenny Pickett was an answer. Pretty much every quarterback since the decline of Big Ben was not good. Mason Rudolph, uh, RIP Dwayne Haskins. Um, who was to start over there? Uh, somebody has started over too, but they have not been good. Um, my like like, like Miles Gary had like eighty five QB hits, eighty six if you count Mason Rudolph. Um, but then you got this team going Russ and going Justin Fields with no with no with no real what what's it called what's the word I'm looking for no uh, real commitment to either or. Then pick up Fields uh, fifth year. Only gave Russell one year deal, and I, Rashad, we both know Justin Fields ain't got it. I don't know how many times we gotta say it. Somebody said this just this Kyle Allen, this Kyle Allen with Fields on his, on his back of his jersey. I, heard, I saw that. I saw that coming out. I said, man, you might be right. He the the I don't think he has it. He's not a quarterback. I'm sorry. And no matter how people put that in my face about Justin Fields and this and this and this, I'm not listening. And. Somebody brought up like, oh, the Vikings should trade for Russell Wilson. Um, and I told you, and you said that to me, I said, I ain't gonna lie to you, Rashad. I'd rather really have Sam Darnold. And I think we got to that point of Russell Wilson, like, I, I don't think he got it either. So what do you do? What do you do? The Steelers, to me, this is just a dissection of this franchise from top to bottom, man. You had a known history of Big Ben missing games for various situations. We'll just leave it at that. But you still didn't prepare in time to have a quality backup quarterback. I mean, he was hurt or suspended at various points throughout his tenure. And you never decided to plan for or have a good backup. You had, Early in his career, Tommy Maddox and Charlie Batch, Dennis Dixon, uh, Landry Jones. uh, I mean, Mason Rudolph probably lasted the longest, I think. Him, they had Devin Hodges for a couple of games one year. You draft Kenny Pickett in the first round when he was really like a third or fourth round QB. You just went through this same crap by having him and Trubisky fighting out for the starting job. I mean, what, what are you doing? This has been a, to me, this is a dissection from the front office on down. Y'all have not taken the time to try to get quarterback right. So the position y'all in is start from the top, work his way down. The second thing is the league has changed. Like trying to do this whole defensive culture thing, you got to you got to start looking forward. And then even back to the, the front office thing, They've been drafting guys with quality picks and trading them. <laughs> Deontay Johnson out of here, Chase Claypool out of here. Granted, those might have been good trades. You know, the, if, if a guy that's grown on, you don't see a future with him, go ahead and let him go. But you're investing capital in guys. You ain't even keeping them through their first contract. So, pick it. Pick it one on two, yeah. Yeah, Kenny, yeah, Kenny pick it. So the Steelers got to figure it out. And then you bring it to present day. Yeah, you made an upgrade over Kenny Pickett, over Trubisky, over Rudolph, but you still didn't solve the problem. I think if Russ gets benched or has a bad year, 
this the last NFL jersey he putting on. Russ is out of here. And if Justin Fields stinks it up, he might well go ahead and get up out of here too. Because I don't think anybody else is going to look at him as a, a clipboard holder type of guy. He's not a Chad Henney. Yeah. Nothing like that. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's not going to be a – He's not going to be a clipboard holding type of guy because he's not doing that on the field. Like, sometimes he can't even get past his first read. So, just a few, there ain't going to be no clipboard guy going forward for the next decade. And I don't think Russ's name is too big for that. So, if he flames out, he out of here. He might go and hang it up. Yes, that's two guys fighting for their lives. And we got three minutes, but this defense, hey, Mike Tomlin, elite coaching. Elite coaching, right? Uh, you got when well, you got guys like T.J. Watt, you know Cameron Hayward still there. Patrick Queen, one of the best linebackers, and you got Megan Fitzpatrick, one of the best safeties. Joy Porter coming up along the way. They did trade with Dante Jackson that Deontay Johnson trade that was good. Get some speed at corner. Ha- Alex Highsmith, elite. That's all fine and dandy, but we know, bro. We know Arthur Smith. What, what is Arthur Smith going to do, Rashad? He's going to run the ball. What do they do in the draft? Draft the right tackle, first round draft pick. Draft the center, second round draft pick. What 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 does that tell you? They they don't they didn't have the they didn't have the old line. That's why we was over here crying about Najee Harris not doing nothing on our on our dynasty team because Najee ain't doing nothing. And outside of George Pickens, this is why they've been in the news for IU. They don't have what that they, outside of George Pickens. They don't have Van Jefferson, cool. Kevin Austin, cool. Pat fire moves cool, but they're not they're not moving no needle for me. And with the QB not going to make them better, I know Mike Tomlin got the wins or most consecutive years or whatever winning the season, but I got them eight nine. I don't think they get it. I don't think they get it this year. And I'll be nice, really. Hey, I'll, I'll, your boy, I'm finna go there. So I give every team three outcomes. Unless this defense turns into 2012-2013 Legion of Boom and Russ can put up those same little 26 and 10, 3,000 yard numbers, if they, they, they do that, 10, 11 wins, no problem. But if not, seven wins. I, I was nice to give Tomlin the grace. I gave him nine and eight, but I can see it going so many directions and more than likely downward. When you got two QBs, you don't have one. That hey, that's that's the, that's it right there. If you like again, they did based off last year got better at the quarterback position, but that don't mean they fixed it. And and they know they ain't fixed it because that's why they ain't committed to neither one of them. They know. I it, it almost serves better if the Pittsburgh Steelers be asked this year to put to get in that situation to go get Carson Beck or or Sanders or somebody like that. It it almost makes that sense to do that. They go get IU. They still won't change the outlook on this season. No, I don't think. I don't think they can do anything. We got less than a minute. Uh, like I said, and we have them eight, nine, and nine and eight. So these are, I guess, my your both of ours worst record as a fourth place team in this division. And when you have, but eight, we were being nice, and we're being nice, and that's and that's with us not liking Deshaun Watson. So they they, they a long way from uh, Burrow, Lamar Jackson. Mike Tomlin, the coach, get him up there, but that's that's pretty much it. I, I'm so, sorry, Steelers fans. I got a lot of friends who are Steelers fans. Sorry. And TJ Watt, not better than Miles Garrett. I want to make sure everybody know that. Anyway, so that's our that's our that's our private theory, man. Let's go and get out. I, I, I don't want to hate it. I like Steelers. I think they could be a, a solid team, but the QB position is not is not answered. So anyway, uh, that's our that's our episode. AFC North, Preach Care, Preacher Rashad. Yeah.